Hello everyone, welcome to my very first episode of this redstone class. I will be teaching you the basics in this episode. Now as you can see, I am in my little display world where I displayed that game over there. And I found this lovely little beach, so this is where I'm going to sort of be teaching you the basics of what you'll need to know. So the first thing that you'll need to know is the difference between what's called hard powering blocks and soft powering blocks. Now blocks can be powered two ways, hard powering and soft powering, and I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. So this is soft powering, this is hard powering. Any redstone component that runs into a block that is not redstone dust over there will always hard power it. Now when a block is hard powered, any component that is placed on it or next to it or below it or basically touching it is going to be powered, including redstone dust. So this is a way in which redstone can travel through blocks. So when a block is soft powered, it'll have the same properties as the hard powered block. You know, it'll be able to activate any redstone mechanism that is placed next to it or below it or anything like that. This includes pistons, by the way, um, dispensers, droppers, everything, right? But there's one exception. When a block is soft powered, redstone dust cannot be activated. So, repeaters, comparators, and redstone torches can all take outputs from hard-powered blocks. Because these are also a redstone component that can be powered, right? Remember how I said that every single redstone component that runs out of this block, or that's near this block, can be powered? Well, the redstone repeater is one of them. Now, obviously, if you place it like this, it kind of acts as a buffer, so you can only take an input from this block right behind it, right? But that is something you should probably know. Redstone can travel through blocks, but with the proper arrangement of redstone mechanisms. Now let's talk about pulse length. Now for this, I'm just going to have some redstone running out of this block and into a lamp, so we can talk about this. So, pulse length in redstone is measured in ticks. One tick, one redstone tick, not a game tick, but a redstone tick, is equal to 0.1 seconds or one tenth of a second. The shortest possible tick you can have is a one tick pulse, and that comes from observers. Place that the wrong way. So what observers do is well, they observe things. Any changes in block states, so that could be a block being placed, a block being destroyed, um, wheat growing, pumpkin stem growing, things of that nature, right? Even water flowing. So anything that happens other than entities, it did not detect entities, as you can see. So any change that happens in front of its little face right here will be detected and will be outputted as a one tick pulse. So as you can see, this is the shortest pulse length that you can achieve in redstone, as you can see. Now let's move on to slightly longer pulse lengths, and we'll do this with the stone button. Now the stone button gives a pulse length of 10 ticks. Now in case you weren't paying attention, one tick is one tenth of a second, so 10 ticks is exactly one second. So this button will stay on for exactly one second. This is in contrast to the wooden buttons, all wooden buttons, so this can be oak, birch, whatever, jungle. As long as it's a wooden button, it'll stay on for 15 ticks or 1.5 seconds. So as you can see, slightly longer than the stone button. I'll just go ahead and put this right here to show you. Now, by the way, all inputs hard power blocks. So this includes the two types of buttons and levers. And when a block is hard powered, it also powers redstone dust that's not necessarily going into or out of the block. So just know this kind of setup right here works. So let's compare them both side by side. We have the stone button right here, which gives a one second pulse. And we also have the wooden button right here that gives a 15 tick pulse. So you can kind of see the difference between the two right there. It's a very subtle difference of about half a second, but it's still enough to make a difference in a lot of circuits. So that is what you'll need to know about the button length. Now, I did forget to show you one more, which is the lever. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically a switch that you can toggle on or off, and it'll stay that way, right? So you flick it once, it turns on, and it will not turn off again until you flick it again. So just know that sometimes you will be needing to use these different types of inputs for your redstone machines based on what they do, what you want them to do, and just what works. So redstone dust is the only component that will activate and deactivate instantaneously. Now obviously this is a bit overpowered for certain systems, so what Minecraft did was they made it so the maximum distance that redstone dust can travel, or the redstone signal can travel, is 15. So as you can see it's not reaching that block because it's one block away, this whole redstone line right here is 15 blocks long. Now here's how redstone signal strength works. It always starts off at 15, and then it subtracts one for every block travel. So this is 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And all the redstone coming off of this will be 0. 
So what you can do is have a repeater, which basically repeats the signal. So this is going to be 15 signal strength once again. But the problem is it is at the cost of one tick. So this repeater has one tick delay. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you that with these two lamps right here. So one of these lamps is connected to the redstone line that will activate instantaneously. And the other lamp is connected to the repeater that will activate when one tick is over. So let's see if you can kind of observe the difference in that corner over there. So it's a pretty subtle difference, right? But what you can do up here is adjust the tick length. So right now this is set to one tick, but if you right click it, you can set it to two ticks, three ticks, or four ticks. Now I'm going to do four ticks because hopefully that should be a bit noticeable, a bit more noticeable than the, just the one tick delay. Because one tick is one tenth of a second, right? That's not a lot. All right, so let's click it off, on. So as you can see, there is some delay right there. Now, this is the problem with a lot of redstone mechanisms, or this is the problem with busing a lot of signal strength around, or signal strength at large distances. These delays do add up. We'll get into ways you can maximize your redstone efficiency in busing in a later episode of this class, but just know that 15 is the maximum signal strength, the maximum amount of blocks a redstone piece can travel. Alright, the next mechanism we're going to be reviewing is called the redstone torch. Now, what it does is it basically inverts signals. So I'm going to have some redstone coming off of it. So by the way, it'll automatically power anything that's next to it, whether that be redstone dust or lamps. It'll also hard power any block that this little nub right here is facing, and it'll power anything below it. Basically anything touching it, but if it's going into this little nub right here, if this nub on the top is going into this block, this block will be hard powered. So as you can see, I can take a redstone output from that. That block is hard powered. So again, what this torch does is it just inverts signals. So if I turn this redstone torch on, it'll actually turn off. So as you can see, this redstone block is being soft powered by this redstone, which turns off this torch, which turns off this signal over here. Now this block can also be hard powered, but it doesn't really matter. Redstone torches, like all other redstone components, still respond to soft powering blocks. So I thought that something important to note was that the redstone block basically acts as a permanently hard powered block. So as you can see, I can take a torch output because that's it's hard powered. I can take a redstone output because it's hard powered. And this can also be moved by pistons, which we'll get into a later episode. Just note, this is basically a permanently hard powered block. So another thing you'll need to know about redstone and blocks is that redstone interacts differently with some blocks. So right now I have a slab and I have a glass block. Both of these are what's called transparent blocks. So they interact with redstone differently, which we'll get into in a later episode, but just know, for now, know that this kind of setup right here will not work. They will not be hard powered. Let me go ahead and get a torch just to show you right here. They will not be hard powered. They cannot be soft powered. Um, they can't be powered in general, but they do interact with redstone in some pretty fun ways, which I will be going over in another episode. So finally, you'll just need to know some logical functions that redstone does use. I'll go over this pretty quickly because I went over this in two of my previous videos. It's a really simple concept. I won't teach you how to make the logic gates themselves, and if you did want to make the logic gates, you could just copy them off of my screen. It's not that hard. Um, but I'll just show you this really quickly, and then this episode will be over. These are the three logic gates. Alright, so this first one's called the OR gate. It turns on when at least one input is on, so it doesn't matter which input. It doesn't matter if there are two inputs. It just matters if one input is on. This is the AND gate, it only turns on when all inputs are on. This is the ZOR gate, it turns on when one input is on, not both, just one. Alright guys, I hope you found this uh, little guide useful. I will be posting further parts to this story on both my Instagram and my YouTube, so after you're done with this YouTube video, please go ahead and check out my Instagram where I will be posting the exact same tutorial. So if you like diagrams, if you like pictures, um, and if you like kind of text, on your guides, on your tutorials, then my Instagram is the place for you. So after you're done with the video, please go ahead and check it out. I will leave a link to that in the description. And that's about all we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will see you next Wednesday.